What's up guys? You might be noticing that I'm a little bit up close and personal and looking kind of rough right now and that's because I wanted to do something a little bit different today. There was a request in the comments on one of my recent videos for me to start doing makeup tutorials which I'm not sure how I feel about because I'm not a makeup artist. I'm just a regular person uh, who enjoys makeup and I'm sort of learning about it mostly here on YouTube. I do kind of have a different perspective and I apologize for any noise that you might be hearing right now. I have the absolute worst neighbors in the world, but let's move on. I have kind of a different philosophy slash approach to makeup compared to a lot of what I see on YouTube. My main issue with most of the makeup tutorials here on YouTube that I've seen is that basically these girls are just putting on all of the makeup, just all of it, all of the makeup in town. Luckily, I've been able to find a lot of really amazing professional makeup artists here on YouTube who changed the way that I was understanding the best ways to use makeup uh, and really just enhance how you look. So I thought today I'd do a little get ready with me featuring my Tony wig because I finally took my Senegalese twist out as you might be able to tell by my silk scarf that's on my head right now. So I'm gonna be putting on a little bit of makeup to make myself look better than I look right now for you guys. And finally trying this on. Uh, just to preface it, I do think I'm just gonna be trying this out as a full wig today. I don't really uh, have any plans for leave out, but I'll talk more about my hair when we get to that part of the video. So let's just get started. So since my sunscreen's already on, I'm gonna move on to my base or foundation whatever you want to call it and today I'm going to be using this L'Oreal Magic Lumi. This is only my second time wearing this foundation. I'm just trying it out but I wore it yesterday and I thought it looked pretty good. The main point of foundation is just to even out your skin tone. You don't need to paint your entire face with it <laughs> like I tend to see a lot here on YouTube and I thought that this was actually a pretty good match shade wise in terms of bridging the um the skin tone from the center of my face to the outside because as you can see the center of my face is quite a bit uh, lighter than the perimeter and uh, it's a pretty good way to sort of bridge that gap and marry those two skin tones together. Before I do the foundation actually I'm gonna put on a little bit of this Magic Lumi primer. I have oily skin but I still like to have a dewy look so I'm only gonna apply this on my cheeks uh, where I would like to be sort of glowy and dewy and I'm gonna avoid my t-zone where generally you want to avoid shine. So I'm gonna shake this up and I'm not going to put this directly on my face because I like to control how much product I'm putting on and see what I'm doing. So I put that on my little surface here just gonna dip my finger in and apply it. And you'll have to forgive me, I'm gonna be looking off into my little mirror on the side here. So I'm just focusing this primer on my cheeks because it is an illuminating primer, so they say. And I'm just gonna put it sort of under my eyes where I'd like to be bright and here on my cheeks. So I've got one pump of foundation that I put out here on a little um, palette. So I'm just going to take a little bit of foundation off this palette and dab it in the areas that I'd like to cover. Uh, the main areas where I tend to focus are around my mouth because of my lady mustache. And then I've got just darkness down here um, on either side of my mouth and along my chin I have some spots and things. So that's where I start and then I work outward in thin layers. So I've got some on my brush and let's get busy. So as you can maybe see, it's a pretty good shade match for bridging the darkness here on my chin and marrying it into the skin tone that's actually on the cheeks and rest of my face. Like on my cheeks, it's almost a spot on match. So I'm pretty happy with the shade of this foundation. So I like to paint it on with the classic painter style foundation brush. I just started doing it this way, but I actually am really liking it. I know these, um, maybe are a bit more old school and not super popular here on YouTube, but a lot of the professional makeup artists who I love to watch, like Lisa Eldridge, for example, she's my absolute favorite, favorite, favorite uh, makeup channel here on YouTube. This is the way she tends to apply foundation, if not just with fingers alone, which is the other way I do it a lot. And she clearly knows what she's doing. So <laughs> if Lisa Eldridge says it's okay, then it's okay. I don't really worry about it too much if I have a little bit of darkness under my eyes because I feel like that actually makes your skin look a little bit more natural if you have a few flaws. If you look absolutely flawless, it just screams I'm wearing makeup. Whereas if you really can enhance your skin and make it look better than it really does, 
people will just think that your skin is better than it really is instead of thinking that you're wearing a crap ton of makeup. So I'd say maybe 65% of my face is covered in foundation. I mean, I do maybe take whatever is left on the brush and blend it into areas that I haven't covered a little bit just so that there isn't any line of demarcation. But for the most part, I only put the foundation where I need it. And you shouldn't feel like you have to put foundation all over your face because you, that's what you see other people doing. That's just not really the way it's necessarily meant to be used or has to be used. Just do what you want. So I saw some dark marks and spots down here that I would like to cover a bit more. So I'm just using what's left on the brush. I actually still have maybe half of what I pumped out, which was one pump's worth, on my palette. And I'm probably not even going to use it. So the main, I think, core of my entire makeup philosophy thus far in my extremely fledgling makeup life is that you don't need as much makeup as you probably think you need. Now that the foundation is pretty much on and blended in mostly with my fingers, I like to take a clean buffing brush and then just buff it in a little bit to really make sure that it's well blended and I don't have any weird seams. And make sure you take it under your chin, things like that. Sometimes people like to take it down into their necks, but my neck and my face are pretty much the same color. So if you're using the correct shade of foundation, you might not need to do that. Like if you're using the wrong shade, you might need to like blend it all the way down to your toes. I feel like I'm talking so much trash in this video. Base is on. Let's move on to mascara. What I've been using a lot lately is this Lash Primer by Lancome. It's a sample size that I got from Sephora, but I've really been liking it. Uh, the label is mostly rubbed off, but I think it was called Seal Booster, C-I-L-S. Uh, seal, I think, means lash in French, maybe. But it's, you know, it's just a lash primer. There's a lot of brands that make these. I just use this one because I got it for free. It actually has helped to add some oomph to, to some mascaras that have been sort of whack for me and it's taken them to a area of non-whackness. Over the past couple of months I also have started doing two to three coats of the mascara. That's after I do this primer if I do decide to do a primer on any given day and I find that it has made a huge difference. Up until this point in the video, you probably noticed that my eyes are basically bald. I don't have eyelashes. My lashes are extremely curly and short and fine and it kind of sucks, but that's what, that's the hand I've been dealt. But it's, I can't believe that I've been wearing one coat of mascara all these years and wondering why my lashes still look anorexic. I'm, just wearing two to three coats makes a huge difference and if you build it up right it doesn't look clumpy, it doesn't look like you know tarantula eyes, it looks good. Normally I just buy drugstore mascaras but I have this also by Lancome, the Hypnose Drama. This is a mini sample size that is also from Sephora. Um, I love mascara samples because it lets you try sort of higher end stuff and see if it's worth the hype and usually it's not. But I've been liking this one especially when paired with the primer that I just used. So that's what I'm going to use today. So on my first coat, I focus, I start off focusing on the outer edge of my lashes and I really wiggle the brush for quite a while before finally bringing it up. And then I'll move in toward the middle, do the same thing and start bringing it up. You'll notice I have to tilt my head back a lot and that's just because my eyelashes are so curly that if I am straight on, I just get tons of mascara all over my eyelid and I probably still will, but I'll get less of the mascara on my eyelid if I tilt my head back even though I look like an idiot. So this is just my life. This is the kind of crap that I have to put up with. So that's one eye done with one coat. You can see the difference, I think, even on camera. Looks to me like this eye looks a lot cuter. So let's get a coat on the next eye. I'm not going to re-dip the brush. There's still way too much mascara on it anyway. It is good to knock off the excess mascara like all the professional makeup artists tell you to do, but honestly, who really does that? This brush is sort of a weird shape. I don't know if it's showing up, but it sort of like goes like a wave almost. Um, 
it's kind of cool. I feel like the weirdness of that shape helps me to reach my inner lashes, which are like super duper anorexic. They're even worse than the rest of my lashes. So while my first coat of mascara dries, I'm going to move on to brows. I use a brow pencil on days when I'm really, really in a hurry, but if I have an extra minute, I prefer to use brow powder because I feel like it looks a lot more natural. The brow powder that I have is one that I've had for a couple years now and it's still going. Um, it's by Essence, even though the label is rubbed off. I got it from Ulta. It's this little kit that comes with two shades inside, like this. Uh, and I mostly use the lighter shade, believe it or not. I only use the darker shade on the areas where my brows are really sparse because I found that these uh, tones are actually really good because they're not too warm. I feel like brows look more natural if you go with sort of a more like ashy looking color. When it's too warm, they look weird to me. And uh, yeah, so I'll be using the darker tone more on like the tail of this eyebrow where I basically don't have anything. And then uh, sort of a lot more on the front end of this eyebrow where I don't have much either. And also on the tail on this side because both of my tails are weak, but this one's especially bad. There's that old saying that your eyebrows should look like sisters and not twins, but my brows look like they don't even know each other. Like, in fact, I think my brows are beefing, but you gotta work with what you got, you know? These are my eyebrows, so I have to do what I can with them. So I'm just gonna take my angled brow brush and dip it into the lighter shade and get to work here. I'm just gonna take that lighter shade and sort of use it to brush through here and just sort of help thicken up and deepen the front of this brow, make it look like I have more brow than I do because I don't have much brows at all. Now dipping into the darker shade, now that I'm on the tail end, just gonna fill in where the hairs already are and use those as sort of my guide for where I would have brows if my brows cooperated with me. And now that I sort of have the shape, I'm gonna go back and forth between the two shades just but lightly dotting my brush in to mix them and fill in the rest on this tail. I don't want it to go too dark. I don't want a scouse brow. Now that looks a lot better than it did a minute ago, doesn't it? I mean, it's not a perfect brow, but perfect brows don't look natural. So that's how I like to do it. So with this one, I'm actually gonna start a little bit farther back because underneath here, it's extremely sparse and toward the front. But here it's pretty good, so I'm gonna take that lighter shade and just fill in here, and then I'm gonna mix the dark shade and the light shade, fill in the front, and then come back and do the tail. So just on the light shade, and there's still a little bit of the dark one left over in the brush from finishing up my right brow, but that's okay. Taking a little bit of the light and the dark, and go underneath here where it's quite sparse. For some reason, I always have a much harder time doing my left brow compared to my right. I don't know why. Just a touch more on the very end here. Those are brows. You can't tell me those are not eyebrows. They are, in fact, eyebrows. Eyebrows are done. We're going to go back in and do coat number two of the mascara. Same thing, just wiggling a bit less. Starting on the outside, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. And make sure you tilt your head back so you look like an imbecile. Other side. I'm gonna let coat number two dry while I put on some blush. I'm a big fan of uh, cream and liquid blushes over powder. I feel like they just sort of melt into the skin so much better and look more like you might actually be blushing. I use powders too, don't get me wrong. I have a lot of powder blushes that I really love and that I think are really pigmented and great, but I prefer to use liquid or cream blushes. One blush I've been really loving at the moment, or I guess I should say one type of blush, are these e.l.f. HD blushes. They're three bucks. I've gotten mine from Target. I have three shades, although I've only worn two of them so far. The shade I have right here is called Superstar. It's just a nice pink blush. Pink blushes tend to be my favorite. And these things, I think they're meant to be a ripoff of the Makeup Forever HD blushes. Even the packaging is similar to what the Makeup Forever HD blushes used to look like. I think Makeup Forever has since changed the packaging. 
I'm not sure because I never had one of those, so I can't really compare. But I just remember seeing them around online and stuff, and they looked exactly like this. And the pigmentation on these e.l.f. HD blushes is mental. Take how much you think you need, cut that in half, then cut that in half again, and then cut that in half again, because there is so much color in them. You want to be careful using these because it's really easy to go clownish if you go too crazy. Normally I put them on my palette, but just to show you guys how little you need, I'm actually going to just squirt a pump, not even a full pump, I'm going to take a little bit on my hand right here. This much is too much. That wasn't even a full pump, I didn't depress the pump all the way, this is way too much. So I'm gonna take just my ring finger, dab it in. I've got this much on my finger, you see that? That's probably enough for both of my cheeks, if not too much. So, looking straight ahead in my mirror, I'm just gonna dab some dots onto the areas where blush goes. Pat it in with my middle finger, which has no product on it. Just keep patting until there are no more dots, and then you can start to smooth. And then I see where the color is placed, and I can see if I want a little more somewhere. I might want a little bit more on the front, sort of on the apple, quote unquote. Same thing, dab with the ring finger, then pat it out and blend with the middle finger that has no product. And there you go. I think these blushes are really great. I mean, they're three bucks, so how can you go wrong? I love these blushes. I just think both of the colors that I've tried, this one and the other one, which is called Encore, I believe. Yeah, I have Encore here. It's like a fuchsia. I love fuchsia blushes. I'm going for a little bit more of an understated look today, a little bit more fresh face and natural and not so much like she's wearing blush kind of look, which don't get me wrong, I like that sometimes too. I'm happy with that. And look how much I have left over, almost all of it. So. That just goes to show you, you don't need much of this stuff. So now that blush is done, we're going to do our third and final coat of mascara and as well do a coat on the bottom lashes because I do love mascara on my bottom lashes. I've been getting really into wearing that lately and I just love a really lashy look, probably because I don't have eyelashes, so I tend to overcompensate, I guess. So let's do bottom lashes. I like to hold my brush vertically to do this. I feel like it works better and I get less clumps. I have a much harder time not making mascara face when I do my bottom lashes. My top lashes, I seem to be able to keep my face relatively normal looking except for having to tilt my head all the way back. But it is almost impossible not to make mascara face when I do my bottom lashes. Mascara is done, so now that that is officially done, I like to take one of these pointed Q-tips. It's not actually a Q-tip, it's like a CVS version of a Q-tip, but it's got a little point, and I will just clean up any mascara that's going to stray from around my eyes, because inevitably that happens to me because my lashes are so curly, and to really get, get on in there, get down in them lashes, uh, I'm basically getting on my skin too. So that is basically it. I mean, the finishing touches are just to powder my T-zone and maybe add some lip color, which I'm going to do right now. To powder my T-zone today, I'm going to be using this Sasha Matte Face Powder. I've tried a few things from this brand, and I really like them all. Um, they have a really great mineral foundation. It's a lot like this. I honestly don't know what the difference is, except with that when you sort of grind up a solid powder into a loose powder inside of the container. I'll show that to you in another video sometime. But this is already a loose powder and the shade I have is Perfect Caramel. I'm gonna take my powder brush, dab it in the lid. You can see there's quite a bit of product on there now and then put that into the top of the container and knock most of it off, like almost all of it. You don't need that much powder. And I'm just gonna powder my T-zone like as you do, you know? as you might powder a t-zone. Gonna get it on my eyelids just a bit because sometimes my eyelids can get shiny. Take just a touch more powder, knock it off again, take it down the sides of my nose, 
my upper lip and my chin area. You can use translucent powder too, but since I tend to powder only my T-zone, which is an area where I have darkness on my chin and upper lip, you know, the mustache area, I don't mind having a little bit more coverage from a powder that actually is sort of a loose powder foundation type thing instead. And that's it, and you can see that most of the powder that I put in the lid is still there. So again, you don't need that much. For lip color today, I'm going to be using a Revlon Lip Butter in the color Sugar Plum. This is my ride or die, can never go wrong nude lip color. It is basically the color of my lips but better. You know, everyone has their own my lips but better shade. This is the one for me. It's inexpensive, it's easy to find, and I feel like it just always looks good. So whenever I can't decide what to wear, Sugar Plum. I love this product because I don't even need a mirror to put it on necessarily. If I just want to touch it up, I can just be in the car and be like, and keep it moving. And that's it. But that's kind of a regular everyday face for me. So now that my face is done, let's get to the juice and try on this wig, y'all. All right, so y'all are no longer all up in my grill, so we can actually see what's going on here. Let me take my scarf off first and foremost. And my hair is just in some twists from my wash day, which was two days ago. Today is Saturday. I washed my hair Thursday. These are the twists that I washed and deep conditioned my hair in. Just so you know, my uh, process as of right now anyway is I thoroughly detangle my hair, putting it into sections of twists or braids as I go. Then I wash and deep condition my hair in those same twists. And these are those twists. I haven't yet taken them out. I just um, moisturized them after rinsing my deep conditioner out and they've been rocking with me for the last two days. So. So they look kind of ratch and shrunken, but that's okay. I'm just going to give them a quick spray down because they've been under my scarf all night and morning. And rather than a wig cap, I'm going to be using this silk cap. This is like a beanie kind of thing, but it's made of silk rather than nylon. I just feel like it's a little bit nicer to my hair when it's underneath the wig. So if I can actually fit this thing, because it is thicker than just a nylon wig cap. If I can fit this underneath the wig, I prefer to go with this. So here's my Tony wig. Look how bouncy it is, y'all. Bounce, 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 bounce. I'm not really sure where I'm gonna need these straps yet, so I'm just gonna put them on the last hooks for now, the loosest option. Just cause my hair, it's not flat, you know, it's in 12 chunky twists right now. They're all shrunken and puffed up. All right, so I'm just going to bring this a little bit more forward to make sure the comb... I haven't taken my combs out yet, which I will do eventually, but I haven't done them yet because I'm just too excited and want to get this on my head. But I want to make sure the combs don't get caught on my hair at all. All right, this is a snug fit, even on the loosest uh, hook loops in the back. So that is just something to bear in mind if you have your hair in just chunky twists like I do, that will be something to consider. But it actually feels pretty good um, now that it's sort of getting into position. All right, guys, so I'm just going to be looking off into my mirror here. But this looks really cute. <laughs> oh my gosh. I haven't even fluffed or styled it yet because once you start fluffing, there's no going back. You know, it's a wig. I can't just twist it back up and be done with it. But I mean, I almost don't want to do anything to it. It looks like a super cute Bantu knot out. When I do uh, play around with leave out, which will be in an upcoming video, because I do want to see how it looks as a half wig, because, you know, when the wind blows, you know, that looks shady. I think as a uh, half wig, I'll be putting my hair in Bantu knots in the front, because I think that'll just look a lot more like a match than a twist out would. But yeah. Find where the curls naturally separate. You guys, I freaking love this. I just love the curls. And I feel like it looks pretty freaking believable. 
I know leave out would look more believable because even here I can sort of see how the tracks are laying. I'm not sure if it's showing up on camera, but like I can see the tracks laying here. So I think leave out would help with that, but I'm just gonna kind of push some pieces over that and do maybe like a bang thing. And I'm gonna shift, shift my wig back a bit. Gotta be careful of the comb in the back on my nape and just do kind of a bang. For my first try on of my Tony wig, I am already ready to buy another one as a backup. And then I might have to get a backup plan to my backup plan to backup my backup plan. Yeah, this is a hit. I'm going to be wearing this all day today and ain't nobody going to be able to tell me nothing because I am feeling myself right now. Yeah, this looks cute, but this look is missing one thing. Hmm, what could it be? Oh, there we go. I need a Matoni De La Iris. You guys, I don't even have words. I love how this looks so much. I'm not doing a thing to this wig. I might just fluff it out a little bit. I know it's going to get bigger as it gets older, but I feel like it's just at that perfect spot of definition but undefined, sort of like a chunky bantu knot out that you separate just a little bit. Yes. Let me give you all a 360. So I'm going to be rocking this a lot. I can already tell you. I'll do a full review and I'll show you guys how I rock it with a uh, leave out eventually. But I feel like it looks so cute. I mean, I don't even want I don't even want to do anything to it. I'm going to put some bobby pins in and I'm going to have to figure out somewhere to go because I feel like this just looks too cute. All right, guys, that's it. At last, my Tony wig try on by Tony Daly. You guys have to go to TonyDaily.com to check this wig out. It's actually very affordable. Shipping prices are a bit outrageous, but overall the price is still very fair. So just don't think about how much the shipping costs and just hit the checkout button. Let me know if you guys have already tried the Tony wig in the comments and what you thought of it. And if you have a video, make sure you let me know. I'd love to go to check it out on your channel. And that's it. Support a sister, right? Peace. That's a, that's a nappy-headed hose there. I'm going to take that down. <laughs>